Okay. Hey everybody, back again. Uh, a little later than usual, but we're still going to do this thing and knock it out. And uh, we've got the Vulture today. So I'm going to be knocking this out real quick. This is the classic version from the Spider-Man comics, not necessarily uh, the new Michael Keaton version, because uh, <laughs> he he is still a little new uh, to me to be drawing for this medium, but um, once he gets applied and they determine how they're going to do him in the comics, then uh, I may take a crack at him that way, but uh, right now... I'm just going to stick with the original and uh, mow it down and get this out there for you guys to see. So. The original suits really well to my uh, my animated style, but he's such an awkward character no matter how you draw him. It's a little intense anyway, but because it's almost like he's had a, a a stroke or something the way his mouth drops down to one side. It does almost this Stallone thing here recently in the last few years um, I've been noticing a lot of artists are doing him that way but <clears throat> it is what it is so and he's not exactly a handsome guy so uh, I like the unique characteristics of being able to draw somebody that's not you know just a standard uh, superhero or supervillain type It gives it a lot more character to play around with in a lot of cases, especially this one. So. He kind of reminds me of that old, awkward, uh, mad scientist version of Lex Luthor like the Golden Age version before he became uh, the multi-millionaire. He was an originally a mad scientist, so they uh, had a lot of unique approaches for him, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, I agree, Matt. They, they've had some interesting ones. I, I like, I actually like the uh, the Spider-Man incarnation uh, from the tomb in the '90s when they made him uh, find that stone and made him really, really old, and uh, had him find that stone and become younger. Uh, that was pretty cool. I found that a, a neat way to revamp him and revitalize the character for uh, that age it was pretty interesting and if you guys don't know what that was uh, he was working with Alistair Smythe to hunt down a rune stone that was supposed to be enchanted and it turned him into the young version of himself and let him suck the life force of another person and uh, it was originally discovered and developed by a, a character named Mainframe, which was an old man that put himself, an old millionaire, or billionaire, or whatever he was, that put himself into a cyborg body until he could find himself, himself a way to uh, be reincarnated with a new body. You know, kind of like a cryogenics type of thing going on. And it was really, really cool. But that's when Spider Man was. Uh, really in its prime um, 
Mark Bagley was still on the series at the time, at the end of his run, after, oh lord, hundreds of issues, and uh, it was phenomenal. That was my favorite, favorite time for that character. I was all about Spider-Man at that point. I that character for quite a time because of Mark Bagley. And then when uh, Eric Larson took over, I got even more enthused about it. And a lot of people didn't like uh, Larson's run. If you guys don't know him, he did a, a massive run on um, Spider-Man and then moved on to a little bit of other Marvel stuff and then switched over full-time to Image for his uh, Savage Dragon series. So, Which is still running today since 1992 or 3. So, yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. Especially if that's not a Marvel or DC arc to be running that long. But... Those guys know what they're doing over there. Now the reason I'm dropping this shadow here and I'm grinding at this is because this this suit is very simplistic and it's one tone so I'm having to pop off some shadows and stuff to dig in to separate the layers to it so it doesn't look all funky but I really dig the fact that this character's got so much going on And normally I wouldn't cut into the peck like that either for the shoulder, but this one is strange. It's got this little groove right here, and right here, and it's got these seams that go into the arms, and that's what's going to separate that and allow for that, that weirdness going on there. Making sure everything's connected. The Vulture's a creepy, skinny dude. He uh, is very, very lean and almost <clears throat> almost non-threatening in the way that he is uh, built because of the fact he's a very gangly guy. But somehow he holds his own against Spider-Man often in the books, which I do not understand um, the physics behind that, but it is what it is, and it's Marvel, and they know this stuff as far as their characters go, so kudos to that. I'm going to do my Walt Simonson, Jack Kirby style knee here. I make this... Um, almost double bell shape where it goes down here like this and crops across the bottom and then crops across the top like this and I get asked about these all the time it's like why do you do that well it's just my style my thing so there's the top of the kneecap there's the bottom of it and then shadow one side for leverage on the character itself and we got everything going on with this. I'm going to drop in the Kirby Squiggle. Because there's a divot right there with some soft flesh for the flexibility of the leg. And it transfers strangely right there. So, put in the abdominal muscles underneath, down here from this bottom, because looking down on him, it's going to be from that perspective. He's flying upward. I'm going to put these off just a little bit, show a little more bend in them, and then I'm going to bend these down this direction, because there's a big fold there where he's curving his abdomen. And he's got these weird uh, seam lines that run across his hips now um, in this version. And it's a strange effect because it gives him boxer short type of uh, 
a boxer short or a wrestler's spanks type of look now when his legs are down because um, it runs across the mid thigh here but we won't see that because of the way he's bent other than that seam right there then I'll shade this underside here in a minute matter of fact I think I'll leave that open for when I color it I don't know maybe we'll see how it goes and of course at this angle because we see the shoulders we're not going to see the lats in the back so we're going to have the top of the wing right here and this is going to be kind of jagged for feathers now I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of those in there because I like the ones that draw the advanced level of uh, the actual feather application over and above the uh, just standard wing backs because most people just add this jagged edge right here and then they leave it alone I like to detail that out a little bit so <coughs> we're going to go that route and feather that up so we have that and then we've got the bottom of the wings down here which this one's going to go right in here and start that off I just threw out some uh, simple hash lines for that to mark the point and we'll get them in here because these aren't these overlap they're free moving so they're not as uniform as some of the other characters would be like an archangel or something like that that is more uniformed and stabilized because his wings are metal and if they're feathered they layer differently so because these are big mobile wing blades and depending on the character variation you'll also get a lot of uh, you know the, the sharp edges or the standard uh, feather style wings I prefer to go with the uh, metallic style that are a little more blocked like Bagley used to do and uh, more metallic like the suit uh, because a lot of those original appearances had them where it was a suit apparatus rather than trying to get into um, organic looking feathers or anything like that hey man I see Jay made it Gary thanks for stopping by oh both Jays are on here Jay Martin and Jay Brooks made it that's cool thank you guys I appreciate it checking my questions and stuff here if you guys have anything you want to know about uh, now's the time if I can answer it um, I definitely will why does your penciling bite no. <laughs> I know I'm sorry <laughs> I'm so horrible making you guys watch me draw cards <laughs> and as we discussed a few minutes ago I decided to go ahead and uh, map this out and shade it out a little bit because this is a dark green character and it's got kind of a plaid texture to it um, it's it's not necessarily a ribbed anymore because he used to have these fine ribs but it looks like he was in pajamas when they did that so now they've got this uh, this shading thing going on where it has different ribbing on it and shading to where it doesn't look like long johns anymore it looks like um, you know the the old long john pajamas with the ribbing now it looks like an actual suit and looks a little more intimidating in most cases so I say most cases because it depends on who draws him as to if he looks intimidating or not um, like mine it looks more like he's angry and lost his way like he's gonna try and fight somebody but I draw him a little quirky so and I like it that way um, I like him that way because of the fact that he's just more organic to me Now the reason I'm putting the shadow on this side of the leg is because of the fact that this is the inside 
and I want to make sure that it all balances out with the lighting because he's going to have light from this side. So this would be exposed, this would be dark, and it'll highlight the, uh, make the abdomen and such highlight better. So a master at this, I'm not. I don't claim to be. I just play with the light for the character that I work on at the moment, and that's that's where it fits. So that's why you guys are getting the big shadows. It's like it's supposed to be green, but um, no. In this case, it's going to be shadowed out. Same thing with this side, except we're going to give it on top of the leg because of the fact that with his leg up that wing's going to black him out but he's going to have some light coming in from the other side so it's going to contradict that and it's going to go across the top so we're going to have to black it out from this side and the wing would be blocking out you know his abdomen and uh, everything else there so the growing and all that so that's the reason why I shaded it like that now on this side you're going to have a big highlight from where the other side's exposed because see now he's got that light going on you guys can see it it's got light coming down in here which is going to highlight all of this up here and here and then it's got this light which is coming up from behind and it's got that light which is going to come in from the other side as a an accent light over here so that's the reason for all that because he's flying around you know he's not going to be flying indoors so you're going to have multiple light sources I just want to darken that up a little bit because the wings are going to black out a lot of that. I'll go ahead and ride that ribcage line there. And then this is going to cast a shadow as well. And this being tipped down, the center of the ribs and the diaphragm are right there. And they're the pec muscles that run right through here. So you got the pecs there tilted. So that's going to be a massive light side right here. That that way we get that flow through here. So we're going to under shade this tie this side of the arm right here. <clears throat> and we're going to leave that edge. And then I'm going to pop in a little bit of shadow right there to where we can't see that. And then there's the back side of the arm. There's the top of the feathers for the wings. And we're going to get a little bit of a shadow drop right here on that front delt. So it's going to curve very shallow because he's stretched out. This is going to give light across here. I'm going to edge that in because he's not really cut, so I'm not going to dig into that too much. But there's the front delt. Then you've got this big piece on top, which makes the ball of the shoulder because that's the bigger piece and then the start of the back because his arms are fully extended so you'd see a little bit of that now the way we shade that is going to put a little drop in right here and like I said just to shade that ball just a little bit on that side but because the lights there you're not going to see that it's just shading that curve and this one's going to be even less because it's right there at the start and I don't want it to look wonky or like it's really deeply segmented. Whoops, too late. No, just kidding. So, um, gonna add a little shadow to the underside of the pectoral muscle right here and over here to make them pop off just a bit from the variation in the light. And I'm gonna do something I hardly ever do. I'm gonna do this right here. Line out the ribs just a little bit. I don't like doing that too much because it, because I get carried away with it really, really easy. I'm one of those guys that will dig into that and just do it everywhere. And then people like Scott Williams or, you know, other people that I know will call me up and they'll be like, dude, that's just horrible. So, like, leave that open. Because inkers, they hate that. They absolutely hate that. My being an inker myself, I can tell you as well, because um, I do a lot of my own inking, but still I do 
some professional inking as well, and it's just, yeah. If a, if a penciler gives me a bunch of cat scratches, I really get upset. But it is what it is. You've got to do the job, but still. Needless to say, it's frustrating. So, I'm going to get in here and work out this, um, this neck piece just a little bit. I'm going to try and not overdo it. Cut a couple of things in here close to my guidelines. that I originally sectioned off here. <clears throat> now, because I'm going to go with the metallic style wings they have a flat paint on them when they're metallic they're a flat green they don't show any reflection at all uh, for some reason they don't highlight either so um, that's just always been a thing they've stayed solid and open I don't know if it was just a, a lighting thing that they were doing or what but I'm gonna go with that flow I'm gonna do this other arm in the shoulder and I'm gonna leave the wings open so um, we don't monkey them up or muddy them up Put a little bit of a ridge right there for that center delt and just a little bit for the back to show it's starting. Again, shade the other bicep. Shade that interior a little bit. A little bit of shade on the tricep, not too much. Because the way it's hitting, it'll get more light. But. <clears throat> I'm going to draw in some more detail in the face here and then work on the mouth a little bit. Kind of tweak in those mandibles a little bit. And now I'm going to draw in the teeth on the bottom, which you're not supposed to really do all the time, but in this case I'm gonna because it shows so you know he's got his mouth wide open so I'm gonna handle that a little bit put some drop shadows back there now it'll make the tongue stand off just a little I'm going to go ahead and cut out that cheek. I've decided I'm going to black out that one too. I don't like the way it looks, so I was going to go ahead and cut it out. I like the way you see just a little bit of teeth on that side. And I'm going to do up the eyes here. And because of how crazy he's looking up, there's not going to be any light on the pupils, which is strange, but it works. Makes him look a little crazier. <laughs> so. Put a little bit more muscle tone right in there. And because he's bald, we're going to put a little bit of a flex right there. There you have it. I think we're going to call it a day with that one, and it's going to be the Vulture. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow, what do I have? What do I have? Oh, tomorrow is going to be an awesome one for the Spider-Man crew. You guys are really going to dig it. I've got the Kingpin coming up. Um, yeah, I've been waiting for <laughs> For a long time for this one. I'm getting some private messages coming up. Um, yeah, I'm, I've got the Kingpin coming up for you guys. So it's going to be a wild one, man. Um, I'm also going to be posting a bunch of the finished cards from previous episodes uh, where you guys have seen 
uh, me draw these things day after day, and I appreciate it. I'm going to get them up there to where you guys can see them. I got behind due to a couple paid projects and other things going on with uh, my new book, Catman Evolution, as well. So uh, taking over every task on that one's been a little bit of a hectic run, but it has been what it is, and uh, I'm digging it. Uh, you guys hang in with me tomorrow. Like I said, Kingpin, uh, we'll be back at our regular time, so you guys hold up and uh, – uh, I'll be back at about 4.30 Central Time, 4, 4.30 Central Time, right around in there. So until then, take care, guys. As usual, post any questions or comments as you want, and uh, we'll go from there. See ya.